Welcome, welcome. I'm Sophia from Lubitsch Junkie Forever and today's video is going to be how to not overspend during the Sephora holiday savings event or VIB sale, however you'd like to call it, or any other sale, really, it doesn't matter. And the reason I'm making this video is because I'm seeing people going back for seconds, that they've already placed their orders and they're going back for seconds and thirds and they're actually searching for things to buy. And I really think that that is a behavior that led me to overspending in the past and certainly getting into debt over makeup in the past and I want to stop people from that kind of behavior right now. So I want to share what I do in order to stop myself from spending or how I um, buy the makeup that I want to without going overboard. And of course part of this is you know me saving money in advance as much as possible but also there are a few tips that I follow and I'm just going to go over them really quickly because I don't want this to be a long and tedious video. And I fully understand that you're going to say, but then you give ideas for us to purchase things. Yes, and I will keep doing that. I'm giving you ideas, I'm sharing my opinions, but I just want to give you a heads up that I don't purchase everything that is out there. I make sure that I follow certain protocols when I figure out what I wanna buy. And those are the things that I wanna go over right now. So the first uh, tip really is something that's gonna be very silly, but it's here for a reason. And that tip is that create a budget and actually stick with it. The problem with people uh, shopping around this time is if they don't create a budget, they just keep going back. You don't know how much you've spent. You don't have a basic idea of how much you spent. And the budget can be really anything. It should be monetary if you're here for not overspending, but maybe what you have an issue with is bringing in a lot of product. And at that point, it should be like the number of things. The way I create my budget is by going based on how much product I've used up this year, how much product I've used up the year prior, and how much product I've already brought in, and how much money I've already spent. So for example, uh, last year I used up about $3,000 worth of product this year. I've already used up about $3,500 worth of product, and I think I'm on track for like $4,000, 4500 by the end of this year, which means that I can have a budget that's slightly larger than a lot of other people, right? If you're a person who uses up $200 worth of product annually, you know, maybe your budget shouldn't be $500. It should be a percentage of what you use up, assuming you already have stock in like back stock and, you know, stuff in your collection. For me, I actually use up so much product that just replenishing some of those products within my collection will take up a significant amount of money. So uh, the way I do it is I'll have a certain portion of that, per of that budget go towards things I'm replenishing uh, and then a few, maybe like $100, $150, whatever it is, doesn't, doesn't really matter for new things I want to try or, you know, um, a fun product that I want to try. For example, for me this year, this holiday savings event, my fun product was this Guerlain Meteorites holiday collection. I mean, this is so beautiful. I love these. I collect these. I do use them. I'm almost out of my original one. I have just a little bit left, but I love this packaging. I absolutely love it. This was my wild spending. Yes, was it expensive? Absolutely. But I actually made room in my budget for it uh, versus some other stuff where, for example, and I'm going to show you a set that I purchased. This is the Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water uh, mascara set. I have never tried this before. I was going to try it. I love tubing mascaras. Here I have a full size one and a mini one. So for me, this was worth the purchase because I think it was like for the price of the full size or maybe like a dollar more, I got like a mini one as well. Plus then I took 20% off cause I'm rouge. And so that's how I go uh, with my uh, budgeting. I go, uh, I divide my budget into fun stuff and things I want to replace. The other way that you can look at budgeting is how many products you want to bring into your home. For example, if you have a lot of product and if you have a lot of clutter and your issue is you have too much stuff, then maybe what you should do is limit how much stuff you actually bring in. And in those instances, you can bring in the stuff that you're replacing predominantly. So if your issue is generally how much product you have, limit the amount of uh, things that you bring in that you don't go through throughout the year, like buy the mascaras, the, buy the powder if you don't have too many, buy that foundation that you go through every year. Maybe if you go through one concealer and you don't have any more, buy that. Um, for that, I would say that uh, buying sets for people who have a lot of uh, clutter or a lot of product might not be the best, whereas buying sets for those who you know, are worried about how much they're spending is actually a good idea. And let's talk about sets. 
sets are being sold as sets in order to get you to buy them for one reason or another like for me for example the mascara set i bought it because it has two products in there and it makes sense to me right but this is how i wanted to try it a lot of people have said really great things about it fantastic phenomenal I was already going to buy this, right? And that's so important to know that you're already going to buy a product. I already intended to buy this product. And so as a result, when it came in a set, I decided to get it. This is like the important part. You really need to think about sets when you're buying them. Like for example, for me, I have a very specific rule. Am I going to use 80% of the contents of the set? And this is the threshold that I must meet in order to, for me to purchase the set. And this is the calculation that I go through every single time I'm looking at a set and I'm buying a set. Impulse buying, you gotta be careful with that because this is what actually gets us all. And it's something that I, you know, gave into before, but I'm, you know, strictly abiding by my budget this year. And I'm doing that because I've made a budget within my budget for the impulse buying. So I've used up most of my budget for this sale, uh, but I've left a little bit le uh, over for anything that comes out between now and the end of the sale so that if something comes out that I'm interested in, I can do the thinking about it. Do I want it? Do I not? And then if I want it, I can still purchase it. And that's, you know, that's important because many times in the past I've fallen for, you know, oh my gosh, this is so nice. Let me go buy this as well. And, you know, for example, one of my blush sets that I purchased didn't actually come in. It sold out across the country apparently, but it didn't come in. I don't have it. And I could have gone and I could have purchased something else just for the sake of, you know, filling that gap, that money that I, that did not get spent, but I avoided that. And this is a muscle that's taken me uh, many, many moons to, you know, fix and take care of and, and hone, but it's something that's worth you working on right now because let me tell you, you will come at a point where this will be something that saves you a ton of money. For example, just recently, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm a plat platinum at Ulta and uh, they were they had like 20% off everything, including prestige. And just then the, not the Natasha Denona Xenon palette came out. And for like days prior to it coming out, I kept looking at pictures of it and saying, you know what, I don't really need it. It's just, you know, not for me. It's not my colors. Yes, it would be nice for me to review for YouTube, but it's it's just so monotonic to me and everything I've seen about it has been correct, but at the time I hadn't seen anything. So I just kept thinking it's monotonic, monotonic. It's just smoky eyes, smoky eyes, smoky eyes. But then you know what? The moment that launched, I had 20% off at Ulta plus Ulta cash to spend. I was like, ooh, do I want it? And it took me a little bit, but I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. I was able to stop myself from buying it. Now, is this always successful? No. Sometimes I do make impulse purchases, but I do keep track of that. And then if I regret that purchase, I will make sure that in my mind, I'm you know setting that item you know um, for a return. And I do this because once you purchase something, either online or in person, or even if you're holding it at the Sephora store, walking around with it, in your mind, it's yours. You're gonna walk out with that product. So if you make an impulse purchase and you regret it immediately, that's not the end of the world. You know, Don't open it, you can return it. Even if you open it and you don't like it, there's a possibility for you to return it. So keep in mind that this is uh, that impulse buying is what's going to get you and put yourself put a budget for yourself within your budget just for the impulse purchases because that will make you happy. You know, this isn't just some torture device. This video is not to torture you between now and forever. And the last thing I want to say, and, I, and this is the most important one, please listen to this. Do not blind buy anything. Do not blind buy makeup. Do not blind buy skincare. And certainly do not blind buy fragrance. This is so important and when i say blind buy i mean without looking at even reviews much less going and swatching please if you can go swatch things if it's a fragrance spray it on yourself walk around the whole day with it have your partner smell it doesn't matter just don't purchase it just based on descriptions you're not gonna be happy and i know that because i recently went to ulta to try uh the what was it the dolce and cabana devotion fragrance that came out now every note on this fragrance sounds like it's perfect for me absolutely divine i have 200 dollars fragrances that have similar notes and i absolutely adore but guess what i sprayed that thing on and i could not remove it fast enough i hated it my boyfriend hated it i think even the uh customer next to me hated it everybody hated it it smelled awful on me just my chemistry did not work with it and this is so important because fragrance is so expensive that you need to make sure that you like what you're getting and certainly do not buy it fragrance for anybody else. That's a definite no-no. Additionally, 
when you're in Sephora or Ulta, or whatever store carries, whatever you're interested in, you don't have to go to Sephora in order to, you know, swatch something. You, everybody carries these things these days. Make sure that when you try it on, you actually walk out the door and into the daylight because the one time I uh, shade matched myself inside of Sephora and did not walk out, instead I walked around the store with this product in my hand I, and purchased it, it was wrong for me. I got shade matched for this foundation. This is the NARS um, Light Reflecting Foundation in Patagonia. Now, I love this foundation. This shade is three shades too deep for me. I, even with like a bunch of bronzer, we don't look. I don't look like I can pull that off. Even fake tan, I can't pull this off. So I've been using it, but I have to mix it with the correct shade and use that only in the summer or with foundations that are just too light for me. I will use it up because that's a really expensive foundation. And by the time I realized it was too deep for me, it was too late to return. So that's a problem. A lot of times, you know, you'll purchase something, you won't try it fast enough, or it'll take you a few tries and then it's too late to return. Hopefully these uh, tips helped and I will see you in my next video. Bye.